how do you catch up on the latest skeet? Via regulated media such as Manx Radio or Isle of Man newspapers, which have a duty to report in a balanced and fair way, or through the internet and social media, which have much less responsibility to offer truth and impartiality. Is this really what lies at the heart of the recent spat between government and Isle of Man TV? Or is it a sinister attempt to silence public debate? I'm sure our guests, Chief Minister Alf Cannon, MHK, uh, former Chief Minister Tony Brown, and internet presenter, Isle of Man TV presenter Paul Moulton, will help us get to the bottom of things. But first, MHK and former Manx Radio editor, uh, news editor Tim Glover explains the difference in responsibility between different news outlets. Well, for example, Manx Radio and the other radio stations, and to some extent the papers as well, are all regulated and have uh, rules that they have to follow. Uh, the, uh, the Isle of Man regulator for Manx Radio is Cura, the Communications and Utilities Regulation Authority now. Uh, but it used to be just the Communications Commission, which people might be more familiar with. And there are, there's a licence and there are rules that need to be followed. And certainly I felt a weight of responsibility when it was, uh, it was in the role as news editor of uh, striking balance and trying to get both sides of the story. Um, Paul isn't subject to those regulations. And that's because the, the, there's a different set of rules or, 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 or limited rules uh, apparently available or, or, or required to be followed if you are just uh, effectively a, a publisher on the internet. But at the same time, there are the laws of the land as well that you have to be, uh, as anybody posting anything, uh, needs to be subject to as well. Um, Sort of regulation lines sort of got blurred, really, at the beginning of COVID, if you think about it, when all of a sudden Jeff uh, were at those press conferences. Now, they're part of the newspapers now, and it's a news outlet, etc., etc., but... Uh, government itself, the last administration, sort of blurred those lines themselves uh, right at right at the start, and, and Paul was welcome at those as well. Uh, and indeed, they were really wanting just to get the message out at all. But if you look back with the benefit now of hindsight, those lines were blurred right way back then, uh, and they're blurred now with regard to uh, to Paul. Um, he isn't regulated like Manx Radio or Three FM or Energy or the papers to an extent as well, um, but he is subject to the laws of the land. So, for example, this broadcast, if I was to... If, if this wasn't being broadcast via the airwaves, um, I would have less rules to follow in terms of impartiality than I would if I just uh, had it broadcast or uh, published on the internet. Uh, you know, the, effectively, the rules are quite markedly different in terms of balance, aren't they? They are. And uh, I think the biggest responsibility as a, as a news organisation and news editorship is, is that balance, to hear both sides of a story uh, and uh, ultimately let the, the listening audience make up their mind which side they're on. If you've but- got that covered... You haven't got an issue, really. And it was always the case as well that um, if if the public were bashing Manx Radio more than the government were, well, maybe you're out of kilter, but if the government was bashing you more than the public were, I think if you're getting bashed from both sides in equal measure, somewhere out there you're doing the right thing because you're never going to please everybody all the time. And, and Paul is going to be on this programme, so he will no doubt respond to some of these comments. But uh, you know, from Paul's perspective and, and his many uh, followers on uh, the internet, uh, they, they, you know, they, they would argue that actually Paul, on the whole, uh, if people are prepared to talk to him, um, gives everyone the, the, an equal opportunity to come on and uh, have their view uh, made, made clear. Absolutely. And... Uh you know, support me. He's chasing this story. Um, there are aspects I know we're going to come on to and talk about, which I'll, I'll, I'll leave until we do, but he's perfectly entitled to be doing what he's doing. That then gives us a, 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 a neat way into the next part of this interview, which is um, you know, the political reaction, I suppose. We're obviously uh, in the summer recess and people are doing a lot more constituency work, uh, so I've only spoken to a few uh, a few members, limited opportunities that, that we've had where people are all together now. 
Um, but there is concern. I have concerns. Um, the whole uh, ransom tribunal left, uh, for me, a, a very sour taste in the mouth, uh, and I think it has for the public. Um, obviously, we've got the COVID uh, inquiry that Kate Brunner is running at the moment, so that reports uh, at the end of this year. So we'll wait to see what the uh, conclusions of, uh, of that are. And I think also it's difficult for government to comment while that inquiry is going on, in fairness. But uh, having said all that, Paul has put in freedom of information requests. Well, if there's nothing to hide, why are they being delayed? <laughs> Just answer them. That's what freedom of information is there for. It doesn't look good when you're not. And, and, also, and there are defences in relation to freedom it, it, of information, exactly. there, which are, are legitimate defences. If there's commercial information or sensitive information, they can justify that in their reply as to why they're not giving a full answer. But just to, to have a delay and uh, no sign of an answer is not acceptable. And I also think uh, politically it's not been handled well when you get a, 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 a legal letter served on a, a, a journalist um, that doesn't look good to the public. It, it creates, uh, um, well, some of the comments we've seen of Putin and North Korea, and it, it just doesn't sit well for me. I think that's a, 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 a desperation, a, a last resort type of measure, but uh, that's not really washed out well with the public. And it, in fact, it's put Paul on a pedestal of public opinion where... Um, probably more people are now paying attention to him. So I think that's completely backfired. So, uh, Paul Moulton, I mean, you're obviously at the heart of this uh, this whole issue at the moment. You were the one that received that letter. Uh, but you've also been described uh, by a minister uh, in the not-too-distant past as someone with a camera who uh, puts things on the, on the internet. Do you see yourself as a journalist, a, a presenter, broadcaster? How, how would you describe yourself? Well, we'll come back to Laurie Hooper and his disparaging remarks maybe a bit later on and ask the Chief Minister what he thinks to a minister going on Twitter and doing such a thing, which I've, uh, which he's removed now, that we, I thought was just outrageous. I mean, there's places and things to do. But anyway, the question is, I'm a man with a camera, wasn't it? And I'm not a journalist, and he wants to stop me going to cover Timwald because I shouldn't be there in the first place. These are incredible things. We're living in the 21st century. Actually, online media is bigger than most media now anywhere. I have always tried to balance things up. Uh, at the in On interviews, I normally say, let's hear from the other side. Maybe I don't ring them all up, but they, they, they have a comms department who mo monitor everything. And obviously, with Mr. Cannon and, and what I said on my piece of camera last week, clearly there was an invitation to come back on what I said. Nothing, I, I probably think I'm probably trying to balance more than anybody, maybe, because I am non-regulated. But the fact is, people would see through that in seconds. If I took a stance on something and didn't offer the opposite, opposite view, where does that leave us? And if you are talking about Laurie Hooper thing, he didn't like an interview I did. So he then decided he wouldn't talk to me anymore. This is playground stuff. I just did an interview. I asked questions. People answered them. I went to him for an interview to get the response. He said I'm biased and he wouldn't talk to me. That makes no sense to me whatsoever because I'll talk to anybody about anything. Trust me, many times I talk about people who I don't agree with at all, but I know that they have their right to have their say. And that's all I'm doing. I am the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. So uh, Chief Minister then, um, it it certainly would appear this hasn't been government's finest hour. Are there things perhaps that have happened in, in the re recent weeks that maybe now government regrets? Or are you content with the way things have panned out? Well, for, first of all, nobody is stopping uh, Paul Moulton or anybody else pursuing uh, their inquiries uh, into uh, a COVID-related matter, as it happens to be in this particular case. I think we need to be absolutely clear. Mr Moulton is looking to prove that there has been a conspiracy, that it's meant that uh, vital information that Dr. Ranson uh, put together in a presentation did not reach the Council of Ministers as a result of that conspiracy. In trying to prove this, he has named three senior civil servants, and in naming them, um, both in written format and also in a, a broadcast that he's done, uh, he has accused them as ha of having conspired to tone down Dr. Ranson's clinical advice, concocted their own evidence of, of, of that advice, or their, sorry, their own version of that advice, 
presented concocted medical uh, clinical advice uh, and as being potentially liable to serious criminal consequences such as unlawful act manslaughter and also causing unnecessary deaths. So this is not, uh, on the face of it, innocent journalistic inquiries. Um, There is very, very serious undertones. And the reason why Mr. Moulton got a letter was because those three officers were, were clearly named. Those serious, serious connotations and undertones were contained. And Mr. Moulton was simply asked to consider very carefully how he was going about naming senior officers. There was nothing to stop him carrying on um, with his inquiries. And I think we have to take these matters seriously, um, Phil. Uh, Mr. Moulton is not the first and will not be the last to consider there's been some form of conspiracy in government and nobody is stopping him accessing freedom of information requests. But we also have a responsibility to our staff, to senior civil servants, going about their public duties. And when you get that sort of level of accusation, one of those senior officers has a young family, is a well-respected member of the community, then I think there is an onus and a duty on government to protect it, to protect uh, people properly in reasonable circumstances. But as I say, there's nothing to stop Mr. Moulton continuing his line of inquiry. And the reason why... Uh, I'll just very quickly finish. And the reason why he hasn't had a lot of response from government on, on this respect, from se- from senior ministers, as to who got what information during COVID and did the council of ministers receive information from Dr. Ranson suggesting that the borders should be shut, is that simply we have, in order to answer all these questions, invested approximately £1.4 million worth of uh, public funds, appointed uh, a leading King's Council and have given t- given her, from a government's side, I understand over 70,000 pieces of paper and information pertaining to government actions. And of course, Mr. Moulton and everybody else who's really concerned can go to uh, Kate Brunner and present their evidence. And I'm certain I have every confidence that will be looked at as a matter of seriousness. So, Paul, uh, you, um, are, are, well, can I, part, can I retort well, to well, this? Well, certainly, but p- part of the, uh, the, the, um, the reason we're in the studio is because you have freedom of information requests in and you are concerned that you as yet haven't had responses to those. Do you not regret then making the comments that you've made about the the officers when you you know that you haven't had all the information? Right. So you called it a conspiracy. All you had to do, Mr Cannon, and not you, is the people in your departments who do freedom of information is to release that piece of paper. It's become a conspiracy because nothing has been released of any note except for this one bit of information from Department of Home Affairs which said we have copies of this presentation. Now, once you've got copies, or more than one, there's potential that things have altered in it. So that, we're drawing dots here. But answer, and, and I'll, I'll do it right now, the, the letter, you've taken it out of context, you read the full line every line of that questioning and you'll see it's covered with all the journalistic things I need to say I understand I think this may have happened allegedly so that is just asking an inquiry and then you know you get the DHSC to back this as a legal letter you cannot defame as I understand it anyway a department so what are they doing on this slap letter you're using the government checkbook to try and keep this out of the public arena. Just release the FOI, which has now been outstanding for so long, I think since June. Only the uh, Department of Home Affairs answered. The rest, the other two departments, the Cabinet Office and DHSC, acknowledged the receipt of it and have none, nothing since. So what I had to do? I had to take to the Information Commissioner. This isn't good, is it? You're for open, honest and transparent government. You said this forever. Ten years ago, when the second thing was going on, you were calling the government all sorts of things and you were going to stand for open, honest and transparent government. So release the FOI and we can all go off and get on with our lives. Well, I, I think... So, so I've never said anything about a conspiracy. You, you've, you've used those words. You, um, you in your beginning. No, no, you no. They, you, they, they, you, you, you have used those words. That is what you're investigating. You've written that down. That's absolutely fine. And I've got no problems um, with that. I simply made the point that the reason why you are not getting sort of a, a lot of commentary from me or other ministers is that because we believe this 
should be done properly, uh, all the evidence should be presented, and that is why we have a KC looking at that in order to not only sorry. investigate... Can, can why I just can I, release? So, sorry. The, no, why won't you release the sorry. FOI? It's as simple as that. Sorry, can I just yeah. fi finish for a second? Uh, and Because I think it is important that you put everything um, into context. Uh, I understand that Mr Moulton will receive all his uh, Freedom of Information request details um, Monday or Tuesday. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident he should receive them on Monday, which is tomorrow, and he can continue his investigation. All that was ever said to him, when you start writing letters about corporate manslaughter and accusing three officers in con connection with that type of language, then you have to understand that there is likely to be a, a reaction, and we have to consider carefully, and we're going to have to consider now this question, seeing it's been, been raised in this way, you know, what, what level government should, should act in order to ensure that staff performing their duties uh, in the public interest are given uh, protection. And I think that's a very, very important point here. But no, I, what I must make absolutely crystal clear is, you know, I'm sorry that this in freedom, some of this information has been delayed um, for whatever reason. Uh, th that has not come as quickly as it, as it should have done. My understanding is that there was some of this information was being... Was, there was a concern that it was not being, being the way it was being presented or given would lead to people to make um, uh, difficult in, interpretations and that, that it needed to be put into context. So it will be put into context and it will be released to Mr. Moulton and he can then do uh, his commentary and his interpretation of that. What I would say to the public is, please let Kate Brunner do her job and because in December, I'm hoping December or certainly January, we will have an open report compiled by an independent person that will contain thousands of documents um, for, for government's actions relating to COVID and we'll make interpretations then around what the Council of Ministers did get and, and what, it, what it didn't get and the way that it interpreted that, that, that information. And, and what I will say on a generic point without wishing to, again, uh, impinge on um, Ms Brunner's uh, inquiry or, or or devalue the money that we're investing in it. I'm pretty sure that during that whole COVID period, Council of Ministers was given lots of recommendations from lots of sources, but medical recommendations that we either pushed back on or sought to temper um, in the in greater interests of, of ensuring that the COVID crisis was conducted in, in a balanced manner. So, you know, all of this has got to, got to come through. And I think the critical point here is that um, we were had to consider when you get that sort of level of accusation, whether or not anybody, whether they're regulated or not regulated, should be uh, reminded of their responsibilities under law. And finally, Paul, before I bring uh, Tony in, um, if having read all this stuff on Monday and Tuesday, uh, or Monday or Tuesday, whenever the the, the information is uh, released to you, uh, if you read that actually you've got it completely wrong, I'll apologise. Of course, that's... I mean I'm only trying to do my job. The government is there to do their bit, but the Freedom of Information Act is very clear. We're all entitled to this information. And I'm sorry, I don't buy the fact it's coming out tomorrow or Tuesday as just and one of those amazing coincidences. I don't think it would have happened like this unless we were sitting here today and possibly you've had maybe some help to get things moving. I'm, I hope so, because you do want honest, open, transparent government. So I'm sure you have done your bit to try and get rid of the logjam. Otherwise, we could be sitting here... For, well, as I said, there's no replies from the two departments, which is pretty bad, isn't it? They, they didn't bother to give me any reply. Nothing. You, you, you happy with I that? I haven't. I haven't seen all your all, all every specific well, request. Well, you talked everything else, aren't you? But I'm um, I'm well aware that you've submitted freedom of information requests, well, you, and I'm you know I am assured that that information will be given to you on. And you've on had Monday. nothing to do with this. In what sense? You, to make it happen. I'm not freedom of information. I don't compile the information. You've for had it nothing goes to do with to the, It have goes had, to the departments. Have you had anything to do well, with I've it? Well, I've clearly been interested and concerned as to when you were going to get your information. But so I understand it will be given to you right. um, on, on Monday. So your and, intervention's helped? But there's nothing. No, it hasn't made any difference whatsoever. I think really? at the, the end of the day, you know... There's been a delay. I'm sorry, for whatever reason, there's been a delay. There's been some consideration, I think, in terms of the release of the information and the COVID inquiry. Kate Brunner has made her position absolutely clear. As you will know, there's been a statement that Ms Brunner has released saying discussions and release of information into the public arena are not going to impinge me or affect me in terms of reaching the judgments that I mm -hmm. uh, hope to conclude and reach when she publishes her report in December. Are you well, aware of this, Phil, the, the bit added to the COVID investigation that I'm aware of this site's called? Last week, before I had, had words with her, she asked to talk to me, uh, that suddenly they had 
um, any FOIs should not impinge this investigation, and vice versa. Don't hold back an FOI release because I'm making this inquiry. And then, underneath, a cease and desist statement saying anything, and this is referring to your, your slap letter, that should also have nothing to do with this, this thing. So she's clearly said, get on with things. Whereas I'm, I'm sure people, some people in government would have been looking for the opposite. They would like to say, we can't talk about this because there's an inquiry going on. Well, I've just noted the time and uh, sadly we do have to take some ad breaks and then we will <laughs> hear the, uh, the sensible uh, compromise voice of Tony Brown. Welcome back to Perspective and uh, we've heard some an opening gambit uh, between uh, the Chief Minister Elf Cannon and Isle of Man TV's Paul Moulton. Tony Brown, um, former Chief Minister, uh, wise head of, of Tynwald. Um, what do you make of all this? Well, I don't know all the detail and, and clearly, you know, I haven't got the detail that the Chief Minister and Paul have. Um, but I think if I look at it from a perspective of Joe Bloggs, the public, which I really am these days, um, I think that uh, one is a problem was what is the definition of what is the press? Um, and the world has changed and it's not an issue just for the Isle of Man, it's right across the world that governments are struggling how to deal with people who set themselves up on the internet to uh, broadcast news and and lots of fake news to be honest um and paul's classed as uh, manx tv or whatever it is i mean isle of man tv sorry and and what does that actually mean um is that a a company that paul has and therefore um is, is it regulated and if it isn't question is why isn't it um those are questions i suppose the public would ask um as far as the the issue is concerned of uh, openness i mean my view and always was um that you as government should be as open as you possibly can be and those decisions are made by politicians the chief minister and ministers not by officers officers clearly recommend they can give observations they can talk to you as they did to me and I'm sure they do with the chief minister today and express concern about things but ultimately the minister has to make a decision whether or not the information in general terms should be released as far as the freedom of information act is concerned I mean clearly um, you know that the act that we have is not as effective as the one in the United Kingdom um, and that that act developed in a way because there was a lot of strong opposition um, from uh, senior officers in government uh, at the time when it was being developed uh, because they saw what what they saw as uh, major issues for them to deal with and, and the cost to the taxpayer. Um, but the world, whether we like it or not, changes all the time and uh, the public want more and more public information about what their government and what their local authorities are doing on their behalf. Um, and they used to rely on the newspaper. That's all there was before Manx Radio came along. And uh, in the Isle of Man, the newspaper was everything. Um, and anybody could set up a newspaper as long as they registered it and they could report what they wanted. And really today is the same. The only thing that controls you is, um, one, if you're registered as a, a newspaper or a radio station, there are controls there. If you're on the internet, um, you're not regulated. And that's something I can't see why, if somebody's operating from within the Isle of Man, that can't be quite easily uh, controlled without you know, uh, censoring them, if you like, in the same basis as you've got for the newspapers. Um, and really, it doesn't take away the issue of liability. If you slander somebody, whether you're a Manx radio presenter, whether you're a government minister, whether you are um, Isle of Man newspapers or Paul Moulton, you are personally liable for any slander and you can be taken to court and the deemster will make a decision whether or not uh, you've committed an offence and there are ways to deal with that. And I think the whole issue seems to be, from an outside point of view, that it's got into a bit of a fight over nothing. The issue is, in terms of the reporting, um, that ability is there and it's available to have them. Whether people like the new technology whether you like Facebook, whether you like all these things, and lots of us don't, some of it, but on occasion, some of us also use it. Um, I think it's important um, that if there is a need for a control, one, it has to be a control that does not deny the press access uh, to report on what the government is doing. Because when we're elected to government, and, and chief minister is the same, you're elected for five years with the trust of the people to do the best for the Isle of Man. And part of that is to be open. And uh, there is a difference of opinion often between a civil servant, what he 
he or she sees and what a politician sees, but ultimately the politician needs to make the decision. Um, there are many things government can't report on because they are issues of confidentiality, genuine confidentiality. Freedom of information is there to balance that up in a way. Um, and if you look at the Freedom of Information Act, um, there is clear wording in there that nobody should wait a long time to get information back because it says they have to act reasonably. And if they don't, again, an individual can go to court and the deemster will determine whether or not a department is being reasonable. Never mind the commissioner, who's got a job. Um, the independent commissioner will, of course, also judge that. But somebody could, if they just can't get the information, take it a step further. Um, also, uh, as far as the information is concerned, uh, departments are not allowed to edit it. They have to give the information as it is actually before the department or before whatever. Uh, they can't start to bring out another version. They can't start to edit it. And they commit a criminal offence if they do. So, you know, these, can, these issues about, oh, well, they're hiding it or they're not doing it, that expression of concern usually comes from people who don't know what safeguards are actually are there in law. It doesn't necessarily mean that government are necessarily acting correctly. There may be issues on how they are responding, and that's another issue. And I, you know, on this issue, I don't know enough about it. But they're the principles of what the law, as I understand it, are, and how my view is as a former politician how you should act. The more open you are, I always find the better. Um, Justifying what you do is not an issue if you know why you're doing it. Um, it's worse if people feel you won't tell them why you're doing things basically on their behalf. Then you have the issue of people getting agitated. Then you have conspiracies and then you have all sorts of rumours going around, which actually don't do government or anybody else any good. Paul, then, uh, presumably you, would, you wouldn't have any objection to being regulated if you know if, if uh, government decided it wanted to introduce uh, regulation and and you know when we say regulation what we're not saying is silencing uh, independent no. voices what we're saying is ensuring that there's a, a, a good yeah, but if i cross the mark already i could be sued and that's been yeah. proved by the slap letter that the government sent out they didn't they thought i mm. was defaming as, as in department Coop Max radio but but I, I suppose the question is quite specific here i mean as far as you're concerned, presumably you wouldn't mind if... if well, uh, I believe there's attempts being made yeah. by the Alman yeah, Communication Commission yeah, to do that. Just to answer the question, the simple yeah. question is, if you were controlled like Manx Radio or the Alman newspapers, whoever you are, hmm? but you in this instance, why would you object to I'm that? I'm not objecting. Exactly. I mean, so the point, the answer to the question, Phil, is I, no, I don't have a problem. I've never gone near a thing that, I, as far as I'm aware, you know, this is probably the nearest sort of thing to do, clearly, but I'm, I'm going on legal advice hmm. to me. And as I said, you have to take the whole thing in, in, in. In fact, why don't you release that letter? That might be worth things, can you? know, your, your legal letter to me, because I can't release it, really. We, are you happy to have it released? The, well, the DHSE and those three civil servants, to put it in the public domain? Are you happy that, that so you can see the full way that I questioned it and, and what went to the clerk of Timbald's office? Are, are you happy that people can see the full slap letter? Chief Minister? Well, I th think, first of all, um, I, the... the the letter you're referring to, the letter that you received, the letter I received, because you've just taken things out of context about the slap. So I, I think it's been you, worthwhile. You can, to see it. you, you can, you can, you're quite entitled to release the letter that you sent in to Tim Wall. Oh. So release that whole letter, and yeah. of course, but will you release um, your letter? The, the from Cam I World? think you've already published part of it, haven't you? Or, I said, or, will or, you release or, the whole lot? Um, I don't see any reason why that letter, but I would have to take uh, advice from from the individuals who important. signed that off. So. If, well, mm. if, fine. Well, put a freedom. And of I can put put, a, that, put, a, put a freedom of information request oh, in, gosh, and you can do it. Can. But I think that you know, I think if you released your letter, then I think there's no problems for, 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 for us doing that. I think I, I think the important part though is that, that I think what um, Tony Tony Brown was saying was actually very eloquently put. You know, and I, I think to be fair to Tim Glover as well, he made these very uh, concise points. You know, it is something that that a government, I think. Or and society, as it's just government, society is struggling with in terms of information, mm. um, how the validity of that information, what sources can be trusted and what sources can't be trusted. Now, that's why we've, to a certain extent, even before social media, um, you know, the Broadcasting Act, the Communications um, Regulatory Authority, the Information Commissioner, these types of bodies, OK, mm. they, they've gathered more importance, particularly the Information Commissioner in, in recent years. But... 
And they, this legislation was always in place to ensure that actually national broadcasting or licensed broadcasting was required mm. to adhere to certain standards and that journalists could be held to account, particularly around, for example, impartiality. Um, and there is a sense of balance, and that's why you know, we, we have and continue to fund uh, a, a national broadcast. I know that's a bit, always a bit of a contentious issue. But you know, we have to have a source where we can rely on in terms of the, the, the facts that are being portrayed and given to the public. And it's really, really very important. And, and, and I think that the, the issue of trying to regulate the, the, what is effectively the Wild West when it comes to, to Twitter, because anybody can get a camera, put it up uh, a YouTube, start a YouTube uh, channel and purport to present themselves as presenting fact to, to, to the public. And we see it all the time from a l wide ranging views on climate change, for example, COVID, coronavirus, vaccinations, you know, all this stuff is being thrown out into public. And we all see it. We all look at it. Uh, but we have to ultimately, when it comes to matters of fact, I think you have to go to the regulated broadcasters uh, to look for, uh, I hope, the impartial, accurate reporting of what is actually and happening. You are the government, so you could potentially introduce some level of regulation. I think so, but I mean, I, I you know, I, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, that that would be a very, very tough thing. Uh, I think to do, particularly you know, given the, the scope of social media now and the the access to to information that 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 has been given. But listen, I mean, I think I think the validity of what is being told to um, the public, the accuracy of such information, uh, and the reliance that they put on that does, I think, need to be discussed in terms of whether or not there should be some form of framework, at least put in or even some further acknowledgement of, of licensing conditions for, for individuals who want to be taken uh, seriously and, and recognised in their entirety. But but also, I mean, I do you know, have to go back to Tim Glover's initial points. You know, to a certain extent, the government kind of co crossed those boundaries um, because we, I think, during the COVID pandemic, for the first time, certainly, you know, in my memory, we really did have a, an emergency crisis. We had to reach out to the public. We had to get through uh, various uh, information channels. And of course, we did bring in broadcasters who were unlicensed effectively. Mm. Paul Excuse Moulton me. then. Thank you. Uh, uh, and you, there's so much to reply to there. Well, uh, uh, I absolutely. have to reply to this. I have to reply um, to these uh, things. And, and yeah. th this is your opportunity. <laughs> uh, however, um, knowing that you know, what the Chief Minister has been saying uh, in relation to ministers um, being reluctant to speak too much about th the thing that you are possibly best known for at the moment, the, the whole ransom uh, issue. Um, it, it's hard for you to, to create that level of balance if all you're getting is, is people from one side of the, 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 the debate to talk to you and you can't get the others because they're waiting for a, uh, uh, okay. the inquiry. Okay, okay. okay. There's no one to talk on the other half. I've, I'm doing pieces to camera, which is really uncomfortable for me. I, I'm left on my own to do my own sort of editorial, as the Americans would have. But let's be clear. Alf, you've come to me many times, have you? Have you ever had a problem with what I've done? Haven't you thought I'm balanced and fair? I mean, have you, I, have you any reason to think that I haven't done a good job? Well, all I can deal with is the here and now, Paul, and, and do you think the situation. I've, I've, I've failed then? Do you think well, I've no, failed I, I, No, I'm not. I think... You know, the point, the, the question that you haven't just haven't really answered, sure. which which the uh, Phil, Phil has reasonably put to you, is that, you know, do you not consider that it's reasonable for us, having invested public funds, 1.4 million estimated, gone out, uh, put together uh, a, an inquiry which has been conducted by a respected KC, having given 70,000 pieces of information. I know there's been interviews uh, conducted with huge numbers of, of people. I know there's been a call for public information. I hope that you two have What's gone along question? to, to Sorry, speak I'm, to the inquiry. Cool. Well, no, the point about us responding in full, and um, when we get to, to answer the fundamental question that you're asking, really, is did Dr. Ranson's... Um, uh, information reached the Council of Ministers mm -hmm. in in proper time. Was it considered? Was it considered in its full context? Did the Council of Ministers make the appropriate de decisions as a result of that? Were there issues um, as to uh, the process that information followed? Should Dr. Ranson have come straight to the Council of Ministers? All these questions, mm -hmm. they're valid questions, okay, because they're, they're, the reason why they're valid, because particularly when you look to the future, 
One needs to be perhaps clearer about the chains of command and the, and the way that information is given to senior ministers, in the, in, in, particularly when there is a state or national emergency such as a, a, a pandemic, and we need that. And I think the important thing from our perspective is that that is done having taken into consideration the whole picture rather than just focusing so on one specific... So I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is yeah. when this is over, when uh, Kate Brunner Casey's documentation has been released, when the public have full access to those conclusions and all the relevant information, then I don't see why you and I could not sit down and have a reasoned right. conversation about whether X was appropriate or Y was appropriate. And we'll be able to appoint, point you, to sure. the conclusions are that a Casey I have this, has then? Reached. Are you suggesting I shouldn't have done interviews I, with myself, think, basically? No. I, how, how how would you want me to do it differently? Because you're making a point that I, I, you think I'm not handling it right, but I'd like to know what you think would have been right. No, I, I'm not making a point that you're not handling it right. I'm just simply backing up the question right. that was put to you. Is it not reasonable for us to adopt a position where ministers who were involved, in, and I was a minister heavily involved in, 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 the, in the coronavirus pandemic, as you know, from right, right at the beginning, is it right and respectful for me to, for, for, for one, for, for, to protect the integrity of inquiry and let that process happen without me making conclusions or, or stimulating so I shouldn't have different done this. conclusions. Is I shouldn't do that? And is it Sorry. appropriate for me to respect the public funds that have gone into that inquiry? Yeah. And on that basis, I'm simply saying to you, you know, I think you'll, you'll only get the, the, the full response from a, from a ministerial perspective once that inquiry has delivered its so full conclusions. So I shouldn't have covered this like I did. I mean, you have to, you have to back this up. No. You didn't like what I did because I got the slap. And I understand that's from what I said there. But are you saying I shouldn't really be putting this other, the opinion that I'm getting, it will be I'm talking to a camera. Do you, do you think that was not fair to do that? And, and I suppose no. turning that question on its head, what do you think about this? I mean, presumably left, you think you were, this, this is the right thing Phil, to do. Phil, I've never been so troubled in my life. Honestly, this has hurt me. It's made me incredibly mentally uh, challenging because I'm, I'm a lone wolf. The, the other media isn't hardly covering this. I mean, I've, I've been on my own. You did an interview with me, but really deafening tumbleweed is going through Manx media on this whole thing, which I can't quite get because clearly there's a story in there. And let's, let's be honest, answer my question. Have I not done interviews with you on any occasion you've ever asked and uh, were they balanced and fair? Larry, come on. Please, as answer I said, that. no. But can I just go back to the no, to the, the point? No, no, no I, Paul. <laughs> you know, of course, I've done done interviews with you, but that's irrelevant when it comes to dealing with with the here and now and the point that that we're dealing with. You're perfectly entitled to carry on your inquiries. No one's stopping you. You're getting the freedom of, of information, the freedom of information <laughs> request. I think you simply were reminded of your responsibilities when you are <laughs> naming. Three individuals who live amongst us, work amongst us, in the community, to the best of my knowledge, conducted themselves properly and appropriately um, during the COVID pandemic in the best interests of, uh, of their belief to their jobs and in the best interests um, of society. And you were just simply reminded of your responsibilities not to defame well, well, Three Monday, individuals, yes. but no one is stopping no, no, you but Monday, carrying Tuesday, on your inquiry. Sorry, but Monday I and am, Tuesday, we will have this answer, and I'm ready to apologise if necessary, if I've crossed the line. I mean, hello. That, now, secondly, okay. this, no, okay. no, no, well, this is important because well. you said I've got to go to ministers and get, you know, the responses. How am I meant to get any answers now about DHSC when the minister refuses to talk to me? You explain to me how I'm meant to now do my job when you've got a minister of your cabinet saying he won't talk to one of the media, or what I am, a man with a, a camera. How am I to do things? Tell me, please. I'm, I'm trying to know. Well, I think, I think now you're moving off into a different subject uh, well, entirely. It's not, it's the, I think the point is, you Paul, I've I've laid... stories, And I'm trying to balance okay. the story. Paul, Paul you, you, you've, simply, you've, had, you've had my perspective on this. All I've simply sought to is add a bit of balance to what you're saying on your YouTube channels and give you... A, uh, I think in the listeners, an understanding of why this hasn't been rebutted in public and why throughout the, 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 the Dr. Ranson tribunal and all the sort of connotations around what information was and not received by the councillor ministers, um, simply because, you know, we knew that there was going to be a, a, a public, well, a, an inquiry into this matter. That inquiry has been appointed and we're just simply waiting to see all the information so that I am in a proper base, proper place to be able to respond to some of these critical points that you are making. And I'm not for one moment 
saying that it's not important for people to understand what information is given to the high level decision makers in what context and what process things have followed. All I am simply saying is we have, we have to do that properly. It's not about picking out one or two individual items and then deciding that is the, the ultimate conclusion. I think you have to see the whole picture. And that's why we've got Kate Brunner doing her chief, inquiry. That former chief minister, um, uh, Tony Brown, as a minister, would you have been um, pleased, surprised, shocked if one of your officers had instructed a legal firm to take action against somebody from the media? Well, I think it depends. The officer certainly should have passed it through me because the decision would be mine, in my opinion, not the officers. Um, the officers are there to advise ministers and the ministers have to make a public judgment. In other words, they're representing the public. I, I think I think the issue here is, is really quite well demonstrated, if, if I could say anyway, from my perspective. It actually demonstrates why there is a need I think, to license web, internet-type facilities that are bringing news to the people of the Isle of Man. If you, for example, were to license a, a company that's operating as Isle of Man TV, um, then, in fact, the government benefits because, one, you've licensed it, they're brought into similar controls as the rest of the established press, I use that term very carefully, and the public will then judge whether they listen to the established press um, or whether they listen to gossip. And I think there's a big difference between gossip on the internet and proper reporting. And I think this is getting lost a little bit in the middle of all that. Um, there's frustration, I think, on both sides from what I'm hearing, really, because clearly it isn't clicking right. Nothing, you know, it's not it's not quite right. One of the um, other things that ministers, certainly in your time, and uh, maybe they do this uh, in, 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 in the Alf Cannon administration, but you would... You would go and have quiet words and say, look, is there some way we can calm this down and solve the problem? Um, mm. Is that not one, perhaps the first step you would, might have well, expected? The, in there's a, a professional like relationship often between ministers and the press in terms of just having a respectful understanding, not necessarily being over-influenced or anything, just making a comment and leaving it at that. Um, uh, we do need to be careful. Freedom... Press freedom is important to any democracy. And in fact, we're seeing and have seen problems in the UK of the press doing things they shouldn't be doing. There's loads of cases going on in the UK where the press have really overstepped the mark and they're paying dearly for it um, by, by judgments made by judges. Um, we're fortunate in the Isle of Man because everybody knows each other in those positions. And, you know, yes, there are pressures. When I was, when I was in government as a minister and chief minister... Of course, I had the same aggro sometimes with Manx Radio. But at the end of the day, you balance that up with, I can get my message out through whoever um, to get out what I need to tell the public. I think the other thing here is whether people like it or not, once a public inquiry is underway, you have to be patient. The public inquiry has clearly got a job to do. And what causes a problem in the public's eye is it goes quiet for a while while the whoever's undertaking the public inquiry does their work then you have reporting because of evidence given and then it goes quiet again while that person provides their report and then it comes back into the public arena and the difficulty is it's of interest now to many people and some people might have more interest than maybe they should or they might have a a, a reason for being quite so interested in it but ultimately then the day representing the public Tinwald and the government of the Isle of Man have said we're having a public inquiry and that has to go on. The problem often is public inquiries take two or three years to come back. But in the interim, of course, you're getting snippets of reports. And I just think, and I don't know the ins and outs, of, uh, apart from what I've just heard from uh, Chief Minister and from Paul, on the ins and outs of what's gone on. And to be quite honest, I don't think the public's that bothered as long as the whole system seemed to be fair and as long as people are acting properly and appropriately. And, and quite honestly... You know, you have to, as Manx Radio, act in a certain way. Isle of Man newspapers have to act in a certain way. And if you go back 100 years, there were fringe newspapers in the Isle of Man who were also licensed. The equivalent of what you could say now is the Paul Moulton Isle of Man TV or Isle of Man News and so on. Um, but they were licensed and that gave it some sort of status and it gave it some sort of uh, way of the other side knowing how they should act. 
and the enforcers, if I use that term very carefully, making sure they were free to do their job. And I think at the moment, and I said this before, the whole world's having this problem. It's not an Isle of Man issue. And, you know, people have to understand that. The media and the freedom of, uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter and everything has changed how we all live. And governments always are behind on that. And they need to be careful they don't overregulate, or that's a disaster. So, uh, Paul Moulton, uh, sadly, we, we are running towards the end of the programme now. Um, but do, do you regret actually naming the three individuals? Would it have been, not been better I, to have not included the names? I went, I went, I did go near the mark, and I, I you know, it, but, but, but I don't think I crossed it. If you, again, if you read the full thing. But going back to what Tony said there, this is not, this is a review, and Minister, Chief Minister, this is not a public inquiry. There's a massive difference. You see, because uh, the, the KC can't actually force anyone to give any information to that. Well, can, can I they? just come in on that? Because the public inquiry can. No, no, I understand that, but you, I think you're being slightly pedantic because if you read the terms of reference, it might not be an official public inquiry, but it's a public inquiry of a sort. You can't make people appear that, who doesn't don't want to appear. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. Right. But, but if she has a problem, I'm sure she would go back to the government and say. These people are avoiding me. We need to undertake this. Without their evidence, I can't give you a report. And they can go back and they can enact legislation that will end up that the people have can be summoned to give evidence. Not if they're not here in the Isle of Man. They can't. Yep. So I'll just be clear. I mean, sure. I think uh, it is it is an independent yeah. uh, review, if you if you like. We did not make it a full public inquiry because that would have cost probably north of £5 million, £6 million and taken to possibly three years um, to undertake but um, Kate Brunner does have within her terms of reference the ability at mm. any time to recommend to Timwald, the government and Timwald, that parts or whole parts if you like of her inquiry could become public mm. okay. inquiries and of course you understand Paul when you go into that uh, 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 situation lawyers are required yeah. everybody but needs to, to they, really... they're not under oath therefore you know, they can say anything or do whatever technically oh, because I think, I think, uh, public inquiry they are they are it's 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 much more serious. Isn't yeah, it? You've got to be under oath. With respect, Paul, if 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 the person heading this up finds that they're given the runaround by people, it won't be long before they go back to government and say, "I can't do my job unless you do X, Y, or Z." And coming back to the point, the chief minister, there would be a judgment then whether or not to take it to a next step. That that would be my view anyway. And I think when one one has to balance that out with, you know, we're we're a small island. There's yeah. a lot of financial pressures. I appreciate COVID was a very very serious uh, event for the island. Yes, there has been some, unfortunately, some loss of life, but it is also um, important that we approach it in a in a balanced manner and in an appropriate manner. And attached, as I said, to to Kate Brunner's inquiry, when you talk about people going to Miss Brunner with whatever theory or or, or um, evidence they have is that it will all be presented uh, in, in a public way um, and there are thousands of uh, emails and pieces of government information that people will be able to pour over to their hearts um, content but we will be able to I think my bigger point is to say to you and everybody else at that point um, we will have the basis and the substance to have proper discussions about what did and didn't get to the councillor ministers, what that means and what that particularly okay. means for the future. I know we're running out of time, but the, the headline here today on the story that I would be writing up about is the FOIs are, the three of them, there are three FOIs that particularly, right, that uh, went to three different departments who are meant to work in silos. But they've all come to the same conclusion on the same day they're going to release the same information, are they? Because that means they, they've been corresponding potentially with themselves if they all release this on the same day. Unusual, would you not say, if, if they're meant to work independently. So uh, all, I've, all I know, Paul, I don't get to see in Freedom of Information. You know the process, Freedom of Information officers, or p people responsible for that, collate the information. You well, will get the information you have. So I think the important thing is you've sought Freedom of Information. No one's stopping you pursuing this inquiry. All that you ever told was, please, you're naming names and you're attaching connotations of serious uh, nature to, to those individuals who live and work in the community. Well, and and there is a responsibility to look after yeah. senior well, officers, whether they're nurses, doctors, senior officers who have rightfully been pursuing, all the way have been pursuing money, their, uh, their natural uh, jobs I, in, I, in, I, in the service <laughs> of the public. I hate to, to bring this to an end, so but sadly, <laughs> uh, that is the end of the programme. Can I just say there is a public interest?